cancer genes and risk reducing surgery so the lifetime risk of ovarian cancer in the general population is 1.4% that is about 1 in 70 family history is present in around 10 to 15% of ovarian cancers a single family member affected by epithelial ovarian cancer increases the risk from 1.4% to around 4 to 5% if two are affected then the risk is increased to 7% hereditary ovarian cancer syndromes are defined as having at least two first degree relatives with epithelial ovarian cancer and these women have a lifetime probability as high as 13 to 50% for developing epithelial ovarian cancer let's look at cancer genes so brca mutations may account for up to 90% of hereditary ovarian cancers tumors in brca carriers are more likely to be invasive serous adenocarcinomas ovarian cancers in brca mutation carriers are more likely to be of higher grade than ovarian cancers in age matched controls brca mutation carriers particularly brca2 carriers have a better prognosis than non carriers the stage at presentation of ovarian cancer is similar for brca carriers and the general population which is approximately 70% of patients present with stage 3 or 4 disease other factors increasing risk a 2013 cochrane review concluded that there was no convincing evidence of an increase in the risk of invasive ovarian tumors with fertility drug treatment there may be an increased risk of borderline ovarian tumors in subfertile women treated with in vitro fertilization however infertility itself is considered as a risk factor for ovarian cancer a history of endometriosis the risk of malignant transfer, transformation of ovarian endometrioma was estimated at 2.5% polycystic ovarian syndrome is another risk factor and so also obesity what are the protective factors history of pregnancy use of oral contraceptive pill the relative risk is decreased by 20% for each 5 years of use by 15 years the risk of ovarian cancer was halved breastfeeding decreases risk tubal ligation is associated with 34% reduction so also hysterectomy is associated with a 34% reduction in the risk So what about screening for ovarian cancer? Ovarian cancer screening is unavailable on the NHS. Ultrasound or CA125 screening has a predictive value of less than 3%. For women at high risk, declining risk reducing surgery. Some expert groups have recommended screening with transvaginal ultrasound plus CA125 assays every 6 months. starting at the age of 35 years or 5 to 10 years earlier than the earliest age of first diagnosis of ovarian cancer in the family so what about chemo prevention chemo prevention can be done by using combined oral contraceptive pills breast cancer risk studies have shown that with use of cocs for those women at risk for example those carrying brca mutation the risk of breast cancer with use of cocs is not shown to be increased with studies 
Given the available data, it has been suggested that women with a hereditary ovarian cancer syndrome who have not elected for risk-reducing surgery and who are not trying to conceive should consider combined oral contraceptive pill use. So this is the overall risk of ovarian cancer with various genes and the age at which risk reducing surgery is recommended is mentioned here. So these are the genes associated with Lynch syndrome that increases the risk of endometrial cancer and ovarian cancer. So when would you consider risk reducing salpingo oophorectomy, risk edu reducing surgery for ovarian cancer? So risk reducing salpingo oophorectomy has been shown to be cost effective when the lifetime ovarian cancer risk threshold increases more than four to five percent. So it can be offered to the cancer gene carriers that are previously mentioned. A significant family history of ovarian cancer, example, one or two first degree relatives with ovarian cancer who are at intermediate risk, that is, that risk increases to five to 10 percent lifetime risk. So these women can also be offered risk reducing surgery, particularly so if genetic testing is not available. In cases where ovarian cancer risk assessment appears complex or difficult, it is important to seek advice from a specialist with greater expertise, such as a clinical geneticist or gynecologist or gynecological oncologist with special interest in genetic risk assessment or hereditary cancer risk management. So when would you offer risk reducing surgery? That is salpingo-oophorectomy, the timing of salpingo-oophorectomy. Women are best cared for in dedicated high risk clinics or by multidisciplinary teams involving gynecologists or gynecological oncologists with specific interest in care of women at high risk. A psychologist, clinical nurse, menopause specialist, clinical genetics, breast and colorectal teams. Cancer gene carriers as per the table shown earlier. In women with early onset cancers in the family, it may also be undertaken from up to five years before the earliest recorded age of onset of ovarian cancer in the family. So what would be the role of hysterectomy? In Lynch syndrome, where that increases the risk of not only ovarian cancer, but uterine cancer as well. When there is associated gynecological condi condition like a fibroid uterus or heavy menstrual bleeding. ERCA carriers taking tamoxifen for cream chemoprophylaxis of breast cancer as tamoxifen is considered stimulatory to the endometrium. Women who wish to take unopposed estrogen therapy may consider concurrent hysterectomy. And this is because if the uterus is preserved for hormone replacement therapy after oophorectomy, combination of estrogen and progesterone will have to be given for protection of the endometrium. Combination of estrogen and progesterone may increase the risk of breast cancer, which is why some women may choose to undergo a hysterectomy so that they can have unopposed estrogen therapy, which does not increase risk of breast cancer as much as is increased by the combination of estrogen and progesterone. More corroborating data and precision around endometrial cancer risk are needed before hysterectomy in BRCA1 or BRCA2 carriers can be routinely advocated.
So what are the pros and cons of oophorectomy in premenopausal women? The risks would be infertility, premature menopause, vasomotor symptoms, which can be minimized by HRT, sexual dysfunction, which can be improved by HRT, quality of life may be affected, osteoporosis, primary peritoneal cancer, the residual risk remains 2 to 4 percent in BRCA carriers and is rare in Lynch syndrome. Surgical complications may be associated in 3 to 4 percent. Benefits would be reduction in ovarian cancer risk, reduction in all cause mortality, reduction in ovarian cancer specific mortality, reduction in breast cancer specific mortality, Bilateral salpingo-oophorectomy in premenopausal women with BRCA mutations has the additional benefit of significantly reducing the risk of breast cancer by 30 to 75 percent. Reduction in anxiety and depression, reduction in ovarian cancer worry, identification of occult in situ or invasive cancer at histology when the specimen is subject to histopathology. Other risks include increased risk of coronary heart disease. Mortality from heart disease increases by 3% in women who do not take HRT. Dementia or neurocognitive dysfunction, Parkinson's disease, stroke. So what are the options for fertility preservation? Embryo cryopreservation may be done or surrogacy. So what are the investigations done before surgery? Ultrasound to look for any ovarian cysts and CA125 if at all needed. There is a 4 to 8% chance of detecting an occult malignancy at the time of risk reducing surgery. Over the age of 45, the risk rises to approximately 20%. So for individuals at increased risk of ovarian cancer, inform non-directive counseling to be done for risk reducing surgery. They wouldn't need to be explained about ovarian cancer risk, risk of subfertility, early menopause and consequences, HRT, the benefits and limitations, occult cancer risk, residual risk of primary peritoneal cancer, Lifestyle modification would need to be explained. Surgical risks to be explained. Personal preferences to be taken into account. Baseline ultrasound and CA125 to be done. The decision would be taken. If it's a no, it's a no. If it's a yes, then consent has to be taken for risk reducing surgery. Ask for history of breast cancer, personal history, history of venous thromboembolism or thrombophilia where HRT would be contraindicated. If there is no history of either, HRT can be given. If there is history of breast cancer, check the receptor status. So if it is positive for ERPR receptors, no HRT to be given, non-hormonal first-line treatment to be considered. If ERPR is negative, Preferably, HRT to be avoided. However, short-term topical vaginal estrogen may be considered on a case-by-case -case basis after opinion of a breast oncologist. So also, short-term systemic HRT may be considered on a case-by-case -case basis in ERPR negative in good prognosis cases after consultation with the breast oncologist. If there is history of thrombophilia, then HRT would be contraindicated. So if HRT is to be considered, check if the uterus is in C2. If yes, then estrogen and progesterone HRT to be considered. If no, estrogen only HRT to be considered. This would need a follow-up at three months 
assess for vasomotor symptom control, baseline DEXA scan, PMI, blood pressure, healthy lifestyle to be adopted, tired exercise, smoking cessation to be advised. Thereafter, annual follow-up until 51 years as you would stop HRT at 51 in, this, in these cases. Check for vasomotor symptom control, lipid profile, LDL, HDL, cholesterol, PMI, blood pressure, healthy lifestyle to be adopted, can repeat DEXA scan in three to five years and repeat DEXA every two years if known osteoporosis and aromatase inhibitors and GnRH analog can be used. So the Scottish Intercollegiate Guidelines Networks Guidelines on Ovarian Cancer have recommended giving HRT after risk reducing surgery up to the age of 50 as there is no decrease in benefits in terms of breast cancer risk reduction. Breast cancers in BRCA1 carriers are typically negative for estrogen and progesterone receptors and thus are potentially less likely to be influenced by hormones than the breast cancers that develop in BRCA2 carriers which are usually positive for these receptors. Thank you.